Every living organism is in a race of evolution with other organisms that they interact with. Some bacteria will go and eat fungi, then that fungi will evolve a chemical that kills that bacteria, then the bacteria will evolve a defense against it, and so on and so forth. But a long time ago, bacteria evolved into using a secret superpower that completely changes the game of evolution, where it allows them to evolve and respond to their environments much faster and beat other organisms in the race of evolution. In order to understand what this superpower is, let's first think of a simple evolution example. Imagine a forest full of grizzly bears and polar bears. They coexist, where both kinds are present in the population. But all of a sudden, a thousand year long ice age begins. Now there's snow year round, and polar bears start to have a huge advantage in hunting since they're hard to spot in the snow. Over time, more hunting results in more survival and reproducing. And as a result, the share of polar bears in the forest increases. This is called vertical gene transfer, where there's a transfer of genetic information downwards from the parent to the offspring. But this process might take years to fully take place. Wouldn't it be great if a polar bear could just magically give its white fur genes to a grizzly bear, a kind of horizontal? horizontal gene transfer? This is exactly what the secret superpower of the bacteria is. They are able to share genes within a population and they do so in multiple ways. But in this video, I will specifically focus on conjugation, where they transfer genetic information through cell-to-cell -cell contact. I'll show you how this process can give them a competitive advantage, or sometimes a disadvantage, in the race of evolution. So let's run a control simulation first. In order to appreciate the upcoming simulations, we must first understand the standard behavior of the bacteria. These ones can't horizontal gene transfer, they just eat food and reproduce, and they have the same set of genes that was used in the previous simulations. Their population initially explodes since there is way more food than bacteria, but then levels out as they eat all the food around. Their standard set of genes isn't the focus of this video, but they still allow us to see how bacteria can respond to their environment. As the food runs out, the bacteria that can sense food in a larger area are more successful, and in turn they multiply more, which is why the food detection radius gene is constantly on the rise. Building up on the last simulation, now there is an ever increasing amount of antibiotics, where every second the bacteria have a percent chance to die from the antibiotics. As expected, the population has a much harder time surviving, and as a result, there is much less bacteria compared to the control run. Looking at their genomes, we can see that the antibiotics created a significant evolutionary pressure on the bacteria where the bacteria with higher antibiotic resistance had a significant advantage, which is why the average antibiotic resistance of the population quickly rose much faster than any other gene. Now let's run the last simulation again, but this time the bacteria are also able to do horizontal gene transfer. If two bacteria come close enough, they will perform horizontal gene transfer, where the one with higher antibiotic resistance will share its gene with the other one. If we compare the total bacterial counts for the populations with and without HGT, we can see that the ones that can and perform HGT consistently achieved higher levels. And this was no surprise, since if we compare their antibiotic resistance genes, we can see that they could adapt to their environments much faster, as seen by their consistently higher gene levels. Now that we have seen HGT be useful, let's cover the next possibility, where it has no net advantage or disadvantage. I ran the same two simulations as before, with the same two populations, the regular bacteria and the bacteria that can perform HGT, but instead of antibiotics, there was a metabolic efficiency gene, where a bacteria was able to extract more energy out of the same food that they all eat if they have the higher efficiency gene. You can see that the populations that can perform HGT did not have a significantly higher level of metabolic efficiency, which also reflected as similar population levels at the end. This happened because the energy gained from each piece of food was so abundant that there was no real benefit to having a higher metabolic efficiency. Don't believe me? Well, here are two other pairs of the same simulations where the only difference is the amount of energy gained from food. The idea is to make energy hard to gain, and as a result, being able to extract more energy from food becomes a more desirable trait. Let's see if this experiment was successful. We can see that the population levels were fairly similar when the energy from food was abundant. But as the amount of energy decreased, there was a larger evolutionary benefit to be able to extract more energy, which was reflected by HGT populations outperforming the regular ones. The similar story can also be seen in their genes, where HGT populations consistently outperformed the regular bacterial populations. But more importantly, the scarcity of the food drove the metabolic efficiency levels higher and higher when compared within the regular ones and the HGT ones. Well, sorry to be a party pooper, but horizontal gene transfer isn't always so great. We shouldn't forget that bacteria aren't really conscious, 
They don't go around saying, hmm, you should could use some antibiotic resistance, so here you go. They just sometimes come into contact with one another, and then things happen based on their chemistry. This means that sometimes bad genes could also be transferred in the process of HGT. To simulate this, let's revisit the metabolic efficiency gene, but instead, let's make it metabolic inefficiency, where a higher value means lower energy gain from food. Just like how the good genes get selected over time, the bad ones get weeded out over generations, as it can be seen here on the average genome graph right here. It's no surprise that this bad gene also resulted in less bacterial growth over time compared to the control run. Now, just like how HGT helps good genes spread, it also helps spread the bad ones too. Or rather, in this case, it slows down the process of getting it eliminated from the population. Even though the metabolic inefficiency gene was declining in all the runs, it was declining slower in comparison to the regular bacteria. Now, if we compare their populations, we can see that the message wasn't clear enough. It looks like the HGT population slightly underperformed, but that could also just be my bias. Now that we have seen cases where horizontal gene transfer creates an advantage or a disadvantage, it's time to consider another case. What if it did a little bit of both? In reality, a piece of DNA likely contains multiple genes, where some might create an advantage to the bacteria, while others create a disadvantage. So what do you think will happen if we revisit the antibiotic simulation, but on top of that, we add the metabolic inefficiency gene? When two HGT bacteria come in contact, they will share their antibiotic resistance and metabolic inefficiency. As a result, they will be able to maintain a much higher antibiotic resistance, but they will also have a worse metabolic efficiency. Like before, we see the antibiotic resistance genes climbing and the metabolic inefficiency genes declining. But let's specifically focus on the antibiotic resistance genes first. The HGT populations couldn't really build up their resistance much faster compared to the regular ones. And I think I know why this happened, but let's first compare their metabolic inefficiency genes. The HGT populations clearly had higher levels here compared to the regular populations. Perhaps this pair of simulations show the difference in evolutionary pressure created by two different genes, the antibiotic resistance and the metabolic inefficiency. Because having a high antibiotic resistance was so important, even regular bacteria had to keep it high enough to survive. So they didn't have to lean on the powers of horizontal gene transfer. On the other hand, the metabolic inefficiency gene wasn't as significant as the antibiotic resistance gene, so the HGT populations didn't care as much to drive that gene down. As a summary, the regular bacteria couldn't afford to have their antibiotic resistance low, but the HGT bacteria could afford to have their metabolic inefficiency high. So as a result, they could afford to get rid of that gene at a slower pace compared to the regular bacteria. Thanks for watching.